Shane Dawson may have made his way back onto YouTube, but if you've been paying attention, many people haven't been too quick to forgive him or to let him off the hook. I could go on for the various reasons that people aren't happy that he's returned to making videos on YouTube, which indeed there are a lot of, but I'd rather focus on something else that I don't believe has been covered so far. The simple question of can Shane Dawson truly redeem himself? To which I feel the answer to that question is maybe. Now I know there are a few things you might be asking. Why am I defending this man? How can he have any shot of redemption? What do you gain from this? Let me answer those questions in order. First, I'm not defending um, his actions for the past and I'm not going to be excusing them. I don't agree with many of the things he has done and I feel he has made some very poor choices. But the thing is this, I no longer hate the guy and I would like to take a different approach by offering some sincere advice instead of just yelling at him in a camera or continuously bashing him and I would instead like to make a case on how he can potentially move forward from his past successfully. Even with that being said, you might be wondering, how can he have any chance of redeeming himself given his history of tasteless humor and ability to really take criticism? Well, there are three main points that I want to address that I feel will help him uh, make proper amends with others and help him grow as a person and help him move forward, which we will get to shortly. Before we get to those points, though, this is probably the biggest question that people might have that I want to bring up. Why exactly am I doing this? What do I gain? Honestly, part of it is just my mentality of a social worker, that it's not good enough to just acknowledge that there's a problem. It's important to be a part of the solution. And that is why I want to make this sort of thing for Shane, even though we've had kind of a bumpy past together especially when my initial videos led to this type of response from his fan base. All joking aside though, um, I do know that I'm going to come off as being quote-unquote woke or that I'm being on a high horse or that I might be coming off as an SJW, but I really don't care. This is something that I want to do. And I'm also aware that there is a very big chance that Shane may never see this video and kind of hear the suggestions on what I have to say, but he did respond to one of my videos in the past and even put me in the thumbnail when he did. So there is a chance that he could see this one too. I also know that I could be dead wrong with all my points here, my assertions, whatever you want to call them, but it's not going to stop me from playing devil's advocate. So, with all that said, let's get right into it. The first thing I feel Shane needs to do is really put forth more effort into apologizing those that he hurt. There are two parts in his taking accountability video that I want to play really quick as they relate to this point. Um, they're both in the beginning and kind of set up the tone for his attempt to apologize. One clip I take issue with, the other one I feel is a good point. So let's have a look, shall we? Hi. If you've been watching me for a while, then you know that I have done a lot of things in my past that I hate that I wish I could make go away, that I try to make go away by uh, deleting videos or untagging my Instagram things or literally doing whatever I can to pretend like those things didn't happen. Because yes, I apologize for a lot of them, but I'm 31, almost 32. Those apologies suck. I don't know who that person is anymore. Every apology video I've ever made has been a, from fear. It's, it's me sitting at home thinking the whole world hates me and crying and hyperventilating and then just turning on a webcam and just saying I'm sorry and then hoping people know I'm a good person and then it'll go away. And that is stupid. That is something that a child does. I'm going to sound like an ass here, but this apology kind of sucked too. 
He does a good job outlining the things he did as the video goes on, such as the racist comments, the wearing blackface, making sexually inappropriate comments, but this very much feels like this is an apology out of fear, especially when you see that comments and ratings are disabled. I just feel that this could have been a more sincere apology and that Shane could have apologized directly and specifically to the people that he hurt or offended. To prove my point, let's look at the Smith family. They come to mind with this regard. And if you're wondering why the Smith family comes to mind and why they might be mad at him, well... Oh, Willow. Oh, I'll whip your hair back and forth. Oh, oh. He loves it when you bring that up. But here's the thing. When everything went downhill for him and when he was canceled, he was called out on Twitter by Jaden and Jada Smith for the video that I just showed you. I just feel that if Shane was being more sincere, he would have addressed the Smith family more directly since they did call him out for his behavior. He could have also addressed others that were close to him, such as those who were affected by him acting like a complete prima donna on the set of his movie, or friends of his who are people of color that he had played racist stereotypes. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here, but I just felt he could have been a little more genuine with this. Now, I mentioned that there was something really good he did in his apology. So let me just play that clip really quickly for you. I'm going to apologize for a lot of things that I've done or said in this video. And if you don't accept the apology, that is 100% okay. And I think that's something that I, as I'm getting older now, I'm realizing. It's like, you can apologize, but you can't expect the other person to just forgive you. By acknowledging that people don't have to accept his apology, Shane shows a lot of maturity here. There's an old saying that I feel works in this kind of scenario, that you will always be the villain in someone else's story. I feel that this part often gets lost in all of the drama that he's a part of, but I firmly believe that this is a healthy mindset for him to have. Personally speaking, if someone had sexualized any children in my family or at my job, I might find it hard to forgive someone. But in Shane's case, I feel that if he was more upfront about his behaviors on how inappropriate he was and didn't spend his apology saying like, oh, I was just trying to be funny or I did it for shock value, that his apology would hold a lot more meaning to it, since it doesn't have a bunch of excuses. Even if he was to make his apology more direct, I realize that many people still may not forgive him. But this at least shows him taking responsibility in a more serious manner. And I feel that is honestly best case scenario for him with some of the things he did. Moving on to the second point on how I feel Shane can better himself, I feel that if he was to use his position of power to make a difference in the community, that he would make a huge impact in a positive way. I really feel that there is a lot of good that Shane could do with this channel. We just haven't seen its potential because mainly it's just been nothing but conspiracy theories as of late. But honestly, it wouldn't take much for him to make such a good impact in his community or in the world. I want to give an example of someone who is able to do so much using their platform. I'm talking about Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals. Back when he was in college, he won the Heisman Trophy, which if you're not familiar with, is awarded to the best football player in college football. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you part of his acceptance speech in which he mentioned what it was like growing up in Athens, Ohio, and how kids live in poverty there. Coming from, from Southeast Ohio, it's, it's a very, very impoverished area, and the, the, the poverty rate is almost two times the, the national average, and there's so many people there that, that don't have a lot, and I'm up here for all those, all those kids in Athens and in Athens County that you know, go home to 
not a lot of food on the table. Hungry after school. And you guys can be up here too. 31 seconds was all it took for the Athens food pantry to be flooded with donations. And when Joe Burrow ended the Bengals' 31-year-long playoff win drought, people flooded this pantry with $31 donations, and it would go on to pass a million dollars. All of this attention for this food pantry stemmed from a short acknowledgement that kids were going home hungry in this hometown. And he used his platform to raise awareness for these families in poverty. Shane has nearly 20 million YouTube subscribers at the time I'm making this. Can you imagine what kind of a difference he could make with a fan base of that size? If Shane were to use his platform to raise awareness about issues that mattered, instead of just putting video after video after video after video on conspiracy theories, I think he could make a really solid difference in the world. There are so many issues out there that he could raise awareness on. Homelessness, human rights violations, domestic violence. Hell, Shane can even offer some personal insight on LGBTQ plus issues as a bisexual man. Or poor body image since he has body dysmorphia. I would honestly watch that instead of the content he puts out right now on all these conspiracy theories. I feel as long as he was to show people that he was using his popularity on YouTube that was in a more meaningful way and had some value behind it, people would view him as a more positive person and someone that's genuinely trying to better himself. The final point, and perhaps the most important one, is for Shane to simply just continue growing as a person. This is something that will take a lot of work, and a good place to start would be the first two points that I made in this video. I feel that if Shane was to truly make things right with his life, he would need to continue growing from his mistakes and understand that with his fame, with his popularity, he needs to be a better role model, especially with such a young audience. I already talked about raising awareness to major social issues as something that Shane can do to better fix his overall image, but taking the time to show some personal growth, given that he was really insensitive to racial issues and other major issues, would be an important step to take as well. I say this without a shred of irony or a shred of sarcasm. But I personally would love to see Shane do a documentary on his personal growth from something like his racist humor. Growth on how like he originally played stereotypes and wore blackface, but then put forth effort to understand the very real struggles of various minorities. At the risk of getting on a soapbox, I myself had to do a lot of personal growth too when I worked in Chicago and I was unaware of the struggles that people of color and economically challenged youth had gone through. Even though I only worked with these youth for eight months and my whole career, I feel that it was such an eye-opening experience for me and it was one that helped me be more aware of what they have to go through. And these are things that I personally never had faced in my life and became a lot more aware of these challenges once I took the time to really get to know what they had to endure. With all the stuff that Shane had done to mock all these different demographics, I would honestly find it refreshing if he talked about his own growth and how he became more aware of their challenges that they faced. Now with all that said, I realize this sort of is a damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of situation. Because I do know that it could be one of those things where he comes off as apathetic and doesn't care about these issues if he doesn't address them, but it can also come off as pandering if he were to devote a whole thing just on the struggle of one minority group or several minority groups. That all being said, though, I feel that this could be a really interesting path for Shane to take if he was to go about doing this. And this is honestly something that I would really support him on. That will pretty much do it for me. That pretty much concludes everything I really wanted to say, but I am 
going to break a major rule that I have before I go and ask for your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. So did you think that there is some merit to my ideas or my suggestions? Do you think I'm dead wrong with what I was saying? Or are you somewhere in the middle? I'm honestly curious to know what you guys thought. Also, let me know if you prefer this sort of style with my videos and having it more scripted and a little more heavily edited than my usual just putting on a camera and talking. I'm still going to do those videos um, on this channel where I just put the camera on and talk. But if you guys like this style, then I may make it a more regular thing with some other videos I have in mind. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. That's all I've got for now, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.